both citizens and civilians alike. This is your friendly bearded space viking, Eric the Cat McKetton, and his equally friendly AI, Signy, here with the first in a video series on your heads-up display and combat visor interface. Signy, say hello to the viewers. Oh, pandering are we, Cat? Signy has a bit of an attitude problem. So, if you are new to Star Citizen, or just not that experienced, you are probably asking yourself what all that stuff on your screen is. Fortunately, most of it is self-explanatory, and all of it is, at least somewhat, placed sensibly and easy to understand with a little explanation and practice. As always, I will be using the Aegis Gladius for my instructional videos. The Gladius has classic spaceship and airplane lines, a shape that all should be familiar with, and it features the high contrast green colored heads up display of the Aegis line of ships that makes it easier to see what is going on. Now, let's get acquainted with your heads-up display and combat visor interface. First, we need to understand that there are actually two separate components to your heads-up display. The first is known as your fixed heads-up display. Fortunately for us, the fixed HUD appears to be the least likely to go offline due to bugs or damage. It is projected by your ship itself and appears in the center of your screen. It is denoted by the throttle ladder on the left, the IFCS safety mode indicators and countermeasure indicators on the right, and the crosshair in the center. But that doesn't explain all that information on the left and right side of your screen, does it? No, that information is projected by the combat visor interface, your helmet. Specifically, by two holographic emitters that are actually modeled in the back of your helmet. How do I know they are actually modeled? Because there's a bug known as the backwards helmet bug, where your helmet spawns backwards and you can stare at the emitters. They are even sources of light. How's that for fidelity and immersion? But it goes a step further than that. The holographic projections are not just some overlay on your screen. They are real 3D objects. You can see that here in third person mode. Notice those glowing green things in my helmet? One looks suspiciously like my ship with shields around it. That's because it is. That is the actual hologram being rendered in game, visible to you and to anyone who can get close enough to see it. The CVI can be broken into two distinct sections, the left pane and the right pane. The left pane deals with the information directly related to your ship, and the right pane deals with information related to your targets, both allies and enemies. The left pane can be broken into three distinct sections. The top section displays your ship and the four tabs. For now, we will focus on the default tab, labeled OVR, for overview. The ship section has a holographic representation of your ship. It will be blue or green when your ship is in good condition. As damage is accumulated, parts of your ship will turn yellow and eventually red to denote damage and then destroyed components, respectively. Around your ship will be blue arcs. Those arcs indicate shield faces. A full face means that the shield face has 100% of the default amount of power going to be A smaller face means it has either been damaged or has power shifted away from it. A larger than full face means you have excess power transferred to that shield. The details of shield management will come in a separate tutorial. Below the ship panel are three bars labeled G1, G2, and G3. Those panels denote the power groups which, by default, are weapons, shields, and engines slash avionics in that order. By default, the power is split evenly between them at 33% each. Increasing the power to one will move the bar towards the right while decreasing the size of the bars of the other two. 100% to any one component means 0% to the others. However, this does not mean they are completely unpowered, just not running at full efficiency. Finally, the bottom section is devoted to your weapons. Your guns will appear first with indicators for ammunition available or energy charge level. As they are used, those icons will decrease while a red bar will appear to the right to indicate building heat levels. If the red bar fills, the weapon will shut down and can even become destroyed. If you have any missiles, they will appear below the guns. Missiles are identified by individual icons, each representing a single missile. The icons are a flame for infrared tracking missiles, lightning bolt for electromagnetic, and something that looks like a wireless signal for cross-section tracking missiles. The right pane covers the status of your currently selected target and any targets you have padlocked. At the top will be a hologram, just like the one representing your ship. Hostile ships will appear amber, while friendly or neutral ships will appear cyan in color. Below the target ship hologram is a status bar that lists distance to target in meters and the target's name. 
Below that are three graphs indicating the various strength of tracking signatures, electromagnetic, infrared, and cross-section. Underneath the target ship section is the padlocked ship sections. If you have padlocked a ship, told your ITTS to track it even if it isn't targeted, the G key by default, the ship will appear here with its name and distance. The ship holograms will report shield charge states and damage states the same as the one on the left. This provides useful information on the status of your wingmen and enemies. Furthermore, it is worth noting that the orientations of the target holograms are a real-time representation of the target's heading and bearing relative to the direction you are facing. For example, if the nose of the hologram is pointed at your face and the target is in front of you, then the target is facing you. If it is pointed away, the target is facing away. Bear in mind that this effect is mirrored if the target is behind you. Ergo, if the target is behind you and the nose is pointed away from your face, then the target is facing you. Or, to be blunt, the business end of that ship is looking at your succulent backside like a bearded space viking looks at a mug full of mead. The fixed HUD displays information considered critical for basic flight. Your thrust, velocity, throttle setting, fuel status, flight and safety modes, and countermeasure levels. On the top left of the fixed HUD is your fuel indicator. Fuel is consumed by using boost and replenished over time. Recharging can be somewhat accelerated by increasing power to engines. To the left of that, and running from the top to the bottom of the fixed HUD, is the velocity ladder. The velocity ladder is an animated display that indicates how you are currently accelerating or decelerating. Sliding up is accelerating forward, back is decelerating or accelerating backwards. The number at the center of the ladder on the left indicates your current velocity. The number on the right indicates your throttle level. The thrust indicator below the ladder reads out in kilonewtons and represents all of the thrust currently output by your ship, not just the thrust pushing you in your current direction. As your IFCS, Intelligent Flight Control System, is constantly firing various thrusters to keep you stable, there will almost always be more thrust output than what is propelling you in the direction of travel. Your gun crosshair is in the center of the screen. If you use a fixed firing mode or fixed weapons, this will be your aim point as opposed to the line of sight marker used by gimbaled weapons and look ahead mode. On the right side, you will see your countermeasures indicators. A flame icon for flares and wireless icon for chaff. Your currently selected countermeasure is highlighted. Below that are the indicators for your various flight mode toggles. So, that was a lot of information for one video, and this was just one of four tabs. Fortunately, those other tabs are only on the left pane, so there is that, and we won't be covering them now. Those are for the advanced HUD videos, covering energy management, shield management, and your ship's signatures. As always, I highly recommend you hop into your ship in free flight mode and just explore it. Learn the controls, learn the displays, and when you feel you are comfortable, take the next step and plunge into Vandal Swarm before attempting PvP. Until next time, citizens, see you in the verse.